Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Is the sound working? Is everything working tonight? I hope so. Let us, ladies and gentlemen, hope that everything is working. Welcome to Sunday Night is Organ Music Night. Give me a quick mention there in the chat that the sound is working, that the microphone is working, that the organ was working. So far, so good. This evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are taking you beyond the surface of planet Earth. We are taking you, we are taking you to outer space. Not for the first time. We have had, okay here, that's good, that's good. Cam, thank you very much. Now, we, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is probably a first for any organ channel on YouTube and possibly Possibly a first for most YouTube channels. Yes, we are not broadcasting just to planet Earth, ladies and gentlemen. No, we are broadcasting to the members of the crew of the International Space Station. In particular, friend of the Garcho gang, Dr. Frank. Now, Dr. Frank has been up there for a very long time, and he will be up there for a very long time. Frank is an astronaut who um, has been up there since the previous expedition. He's up there now in the current expedition and he will remain up there for the next expedition, meaning he will be the longest serving member of the, um, the ISS team, one of the longest space stays in history, which is rather amazing. So Frank and all the team up there in the ISS, if you are listening in, I'm not sure if you're listening live, you might be, but you will be catching up at some point. Congratulations on all the wonderful things you're doing and uh, welcome to the Garchur gang and welcome to this crazy world of organ music. Now, the little birdies have been telling me that Frank is a music lover and Frank, one of Frank's m favorite pieces of music is a lovely, oops, sorry, I'm try still trying to get this thing to work, is a lovely old hymn that we've featured a couple of times on the channel before, but tonight we're going to be featuring it just for Frank. Uh, Dr. Frank Rubio, that's correct, that's his full name. And um, if you check out the description of the video itself, so down in the description below, you will find links to Frank's NASA page, you will find links to the expedition, you will find links to the ISS. Um, I hope you checked all that out before the concert, but if you wait till the end of the concert, you can go and check all of these things out again. It would be absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to go and find out about all these amazing people and all the amazing things they're doing up there. It's a fascinating world. It really is. And oh my goodness me. So tonight's concert is going to be space themed and we're kicking off with Frank's favorite hymn, which is Great is Thy Faithfulness. And we found out about that from Deborah. Ha <laughs> ha. Who's Deborah? <laughs>
Great is thy faithfulness. Requested by and for Dr. Frank Rubio up there on the ISS. Currently hurtling around uh, Western Europe by the sounds of it, near Portugal, I believe, at the moment. So, all the best to the guys and gals up there. May you have a successful mission and a wonderful time. And I hope this evening's music provides a little bit of entertainment for you in between all the mission bits and bobs you have to take care of. How exciting. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're having a program this evening of spacey music, um, just, as a, just as a little treat. And we've got all sorts of goodies here. We started, of course, with the wonderful music from Star Trek. And I grew up on the original Star Trek. Of course we did. Bill Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, and the gang. DeForest Kelly as the wonderful Bones. And um, Jimmy, Jimmy Doohan, of course, as the, the Irish actor playing the Scottish, um, Scottish guy <laughs> down in the engine room. Very interesting. Um, of course, an Irish guy with Canadian roots. Wasn't that right, Cam? Am I right? Am I right? Heading over Japan. Oh, they're all over the place. Right, wonderful. Good for you. Now, I started out the evening with the original Star Trek. However, there is other Star Trek music that is just as exciting and wonderful. Let's play around with that. Oh, this is exciting. I will play four notes and you know exactly what's coming.
Hello. Sorry, I got carried away there. I was, I was going to be playing a piece of music tonight. Uh, it's a piece of music I've been trying to find for ages, and finally, after a long search, I found the actual score, the orchestral score. And I was going to buy the orchestral score, and I was going to read the orchestral score, I was going to learn it and read it for tonight. It's one of my favourite films, one of my favourite pieces of film music ever. And the copyright demons told me I couldn't buy it in my country. Now, this was earlier today. Now, what I could have done was I could have then asked one of you, based over in the United States or somewhere, if I could have bought it there. What a wonderful idea. So what did I do? I asked someone in the United States if they would buy it for me and I would pay them back. It was copyright reserved over there as well. I contacted somebody in the United Kingdom and said, hello, check out this link. Can you buy it? If so, I'll pay you back. They couldn't buy it either. It turns out this piece of music is only available in I don't know where, maybe on the International Space Station. Um, it turns out you cannot buy this score for copyright reasons, not available in your country. Damn it. The piece of music in question is, of course, Joe got it right, Uncle Joe got it right, The Day the Earth Stood Still, one of my favourite films of all time. Actually, even the new version of it with Keanu Reeves isn't bad, but of course it's, none of it's as good as the original version. But Mr. Barry, John Barry, who composed the music for... Eh, sorry, rubbish, not John Barry. Um, Bernard Herrmann. Sorry, it was Bernard Herrmann, wasn't it? Bernard Herrmann wrote the music for it, and um, he, got, he got these two wonderful uh, chords going the whole time. Yeah? And Magic Mike's back tonight. Hi, Mike. Sorry I haven't answered you yet. We've had a very busy week, but I am, you're still in my thoughts. I will, I will be getting back to you. Um, um, Bernard Herrmann introduced us to those, three, those two harmonies. And the idea is, how far away can you get from one note without repeating it during a scale? Well, obviously, a tritone. So if you take an octave, what's the furthest point from that octave? It's this in the middle. Yeah? And if you take those... If you do that, <laughs> if you do that, then you get that amazing effect. And Bernard Herrmann was the first to use those chords in his music for The Day the Earth Stood Still. Now, I had, I had visions of me playing an arrangement of it here on the organ for this evening. So, um, I will be reaching out to some of you to see if you can buy it in your part of the world, uh, and then I will actually get round to doing it, because it's a piece of music I've wanted to play on the channel for a very, very long time indeed. Now, has my list finally worked? Yes, this magnificent piece of kit that I have here Again, it's not synchronizing the way it should be doing. I set all this up on my laptop today. The pieces of music are here, but the, uh, <laughs> for some reason, for some reason, some bizarre reason, the, um, the list of, I put a program together and a list, and the program didn't come through. It didn't synchronize, so go figure. Uh, technology is not on our side. Oh, by the way, now, here, people, uh, you were listening during that last number there. Could you hear the music going in and out of stereo? Those of you who are listening on headphones, let me know if you could hear it, because here, on my machine, it's, it's flickering in and out of stereo. Now, I'm not sure if this is a local issue with my, maybe just the headphones, it could be, but let me know if it's coming through the stream as well, if you're listening on headphones. Um, and that would be good to know, because we've had all sorts of technical issues over the last few days, and um, we need to get Commander Scott to come in and have a look and see if he can work out what the hell's going on. Let's have something completely different, a piece of music taking us to the stars, Hoagie Carmichael's Stardust.
It would appear our director has disappeared. Stardust. I'm dedicating that one to Uncle Joe. Um, Uncle Joe loves the music of Hoagie Carmichael, and I think that would have gone down rather nicely over there. So, yes. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Uncle Joe even just said it there in the chat. I should be reading the chat while I'm improvising along, shouldn't I? Should be doing that. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you must excuse our uh, director, Vanessa, tonight. We, um, we, have, we have a baby downstairs who is a little bit on the... A little bit on the colicky side, if you know what I mean. Touch of the old tummy troubles. And um, I'm guessing it's feeding time downstairs. I'm hearing all sorts of noises <laughs> from down there. It sounds like someone fighting with a gorilla. Um, <laughs> it would appear to be... Um, oh, that was it, actually. Ah, damn it. I just found what I was looking for without even thinking about it. I, sometimes these things work, don't they? Nah. Where is it? There it is. Um, yes, so I do apologise if Vanessa is not in the chat for all of the concert this evening. Um, she will be around, she will be here. But we have Uncle Joe and we have Cameron Cam Platz from the Platz Gang helping us out in the chat. So if you have any questions, any um, things that you think need uh, coming along with, then here, let them know. And we can work it all out together. Exciting stuff. Right. Now then, back to the world of hymns. Yes, there are hymns that are not necessarily involved with space, but they do, they do and do, if you look carefully at the words, they do tell us about the world and the universe around us. For example, this one here, let all the world in every corner sing, my God and King. The heavens are not too high. There you go. His praise may thither fly. The earth is not too low. His praises there may grow. Let all the world at every corner sing, my God and King. A perfect piece of music for our, our, our friends and um, amazing folks up there on the ISS. Looking down on us from around. Can you imagine, can you imagine just being there, just watching the world, literally watching the world on a daily basis, watching the sun rise across the world, watching the sun move across the world, watching, oh my goodness, it, it, it just, it beggars belief, it really does. It must be the most amazing thing in the world. Wow, exactly. Maybe one day space travel will be available to everyone and not just people like Bill Shatner, <laughs> who go up there at the age of 90 odd, well, not quite, but you know what I mean. They, they kind of almost went up, didn't they? Let all the world, in every corner sing. Sing along if you know the words, if you don't hum along, and if you don't know the tune, make it up.
Oh, look at that, everybody. Our friend Mukad Tenno is being exceptionally generous tonight and donating memberships to the channel. Thank you indeed, Mukad Tenno. That's very wonderful of you. Amazing. Thank you very much. Clever, clever stuff. I don't know how all these things work, but isn't it wonderful? Well done. Now, if you are now a member of the channel on here on YouTube, it means you can use our little emojis. We have got your gang emojis that are all good fun to use. And uh, I hope you enjoy using them. Find out what they all are. We can work out what they are. You, there's lots of them around. Now then, there are Star Trek fans out there. And there are obviously then Star Wars fans out there too. Ooh. Uh, a long time ago, I got this as a gift from a member of the Gartrell gang. Um, he didn't buy it for me, but he sort of, he worked out how much it cost and then sent me the money and said, order it yourself from Amazon in Germany. So I did. And I got this wonderful book of music from Star Wars. Now, of course, the Star Wars music composed by John Williams. Oh my goodness me. Amazing, amazing stuff. Generally, wonderful film music. Um, now, John Williams. John Williams, let's talk about music composition style for a moment. I, know, I see Andrew's with us this evening. Hello, Andrew. And Andrew knows all about this kind of stuff as well. And um, it was all about this kind of stuff as well. And John Williams is very famous for doing clever things. He will hold a note in the bass. I'm holding a note with my left foot here. It's a C. Now that note can mean, it can mean the root note of C major. It can be the third of A minor. It can be the fifth of F major. Uh, what else can it be? It can be it can be all sorts of things. It could be the seventh of D minor. It could be the seventh of D dominant seventh. It can be the oh I don't know. It can be the diminished fifth of that. It can be the ninth of this. Yeah. It can be the it can be the minor ninth of this, which actually makes it sound like a diminished chord. Is that a diminished third or? A, a, we don't know, uh, diminished root, how, how, et cetera, et cetera. It's exciting stuff. Um, so notes can have any function. And John Williams is very clever. And Joe Williams does, uh, Joe Williams, John Williams, Joe Williams was a wonderful blues singer who worked Count Basie. No, John Williams uh, takes things like this and uh, has a... Yeah. And by doing, you know, keeping that note there, but moving up different harmonies and things like that, it's very clever. Very, very clever indeed, and it builds tension. Now, if you're going to be a film music composer, tension is one of the most important things around. Let's have some music from Star Wars. What shall we have? I don't know. Let's flick through the book and let's have... Nah, I don't want that. Let's have... That looks good. Yeah, that looks quite good. Let's have that. Today is May the 7th, so a couple of days ago it was May the 4th. And if you speak with a lisp, then may the fourth be with you would be perfect. Here it is, may the fourth. <laughs> Spitting all over the organ, sorry about that.
one of those wonderful themes that just does this. And again, those John Williams have been clever. Minor. Yeah, but he doesn't do that. He goes up a note there. So he's using something called modes rather than normal scales to create tension and take you places. Isn't that exciting? Now, I think in this book somewhere, somewhere in the book, it has to be in here, there's going to be a fun piece of music. You know what's coming, don't you? There's, there it is. There it is. <laughs> if you're going to have fun with Star Wars music, then you have to... We have to head down to the canteen, as it were, and the cantina band. And a wonderful piece of music. This was John Williams recreating the world of a Dixieland jazz band. And many people have tried performing this on church organs before, and some have succeeded, and some have tried their best. What you have to do, what you have to do is play it like you're playing a theatre organ. And that's ever so slightly different to playing a classical organ, technique-wise. And, ladies and gentlemen, it sounds then something like this. I love it because the music here, it says... How many pages is this? I'm going to have to do some page turning here, ladies and gentlemen. What key is that in, ladies and gentlemen? <gasps> that's an E-flat minor. That's a good key to play. Okay, this is the entire cantina band arrangement. I'm just going to sight read this and see what happens. It says... With old-time jazz band Zeal. Zeal, there's a good word for you. Z-E-A-L. Let's see then, ladies and gentlemen, if we can get some old-time old jazz band Zeal going. The Cantina Band.
the Cantina Band, as you've probably never heard it before. Me neither. What the hell was going on in the middle there? Very bizarre middle part. I have no idea what that's all about. Okay, it's doing things like this. Um, that makes sort of sense, doesn't it? But um, that's not what I remember. Very bizarre. Fun nonetheless. Right, ladies and gentlemen, the cantina band with some little extras thrown in. There's going to be more Star Trek coming later. Back to the world of iPads. Here's another one I'm going to dedicate to Uncle Joe. Actually, no, I'm going to dedicate this one to Marie. Uh, Marie instead. Marie is Joe's wife. And um, this is actually taking us to the world of Disney. Um, but it's a wonderful piece of music, and uh, I think it needs to be played tonight. When you wish upon a star. Do you like my starry socks, by the way?
who sang When You Wish Upon a Star originally. We all know it wasn't, it wasn't Walt Disney himself. Who sang it the first time? It was the voice of Jiminy Cricket from Pinocchio. We know that much, but who was the voice of Jiminy Cricket? Our friend Yellow Bird has sent me this little number, which is a great old jazz classic, actually. Where does it start? There it starts. There's a verse to it. I don't know the verse. Right, well, let's play it with the verse then. I didn't know there was a verse. Mm. I suppose when you're a young pup and you become interested in the universe beyond planet Earth, as I did, for example. Uh, when I was young, I had a telescope. I think it was a, it was a Christmas present, wasn't it, Mum? I had a, I had a, a little, uh, a, yeah, it wasn't that little, but a telescope on a tripod. It was red, I remember that. And my dad and I would go out in the back garden late at night, and we would look up at the stars and at the moon, and it would take forever for us to focus on things, because the, the, the little optics that were involved there were absolutely pathetic. And my dad, my dad went and found some um, really good uh, microscope lenses, microscope lenses that we then used, we fit into the, mic the telescope thing and it worked, it worked an absolute treat, much easier to see. And we jiggered about with them with mirrors and things to make sure that it would work properly and it was wonderful. And we could get wonderful, wonderful images. And we were both fascinated by looking at the moon, obviously, the surface of the moon. Now, back in the, back in the I don't know when would it have been, the early 80s, Good heavens, it's 40 years ago. Back in the early 80s, the, the, the atmosphere in the north of Scotland was definitely less contaminated than it will be now. So on a clear night, you could definitely see precise things on the surface of the moon. Now, living in this part of Germany where I am now, that would not be the case. Um, we live in the middle, right in the middle of Germany. Um, and um, there's just too much pollution and too much well, pollen, basically, and all those sorts of things around. And not enough weather to blow it all away. That's a great thing about living in the north of Scotland. The weather will always blow any sort of smush away out of the air. So, but my dad and I were always fascinated by the surface of the moon. And one of the first questions I would have asked, I imagine, is how high is the moon? And there's a wonderful old piece of music. Morgan Lewis wrote the music and Nancy Hamilton wrote the words. How High the Moon, a wonderful old jazz classic from, uh, it says here, that can't be right, it says here 19, 1940, well that could be right actually, couldn't it, MCMXL, that's 1940, yes that's right, 1940, is that right? Could be, How High the Moon.
got to get a little cha-cha-cha in there, don't we? There we are. How high the moon? How high the moon? Ladies and gentlemen, let's now... Let's now... Oh, good heavens. How am I going to find this? There's a million things in here. How do I... I suppose I'm just going to have to do la di da di da and find my way through to it. Here's a book that has been sent. Ah, there we are. There it is. Now, will this work? Oh, yes, it will. John Williams again. Yes, this could work. How are we going to play this? This could be interesting. All right, we have a request. A request from one of you. Thank you very much indeed. Sadly, um, we can't get the, um, for some reason, um, what I need is an Apple Pencil, wouldn't that be cool? And then Vanessa could sort of scribble in on the, on the request here, she could scribble in who it's for in spider poo writing. And then it will pop up on my screen. I will know exactly who it's for and um, that'll work. Here, folks, when your right hand is itchy and you scratch it on wood, isn't, there, isn't that mean something? Doesn't that mean something? I'm sure it means, was it, your, is it your, left, your left hand means you're going to meet someone and your right hand means you're going to come into money. Isn't that right? Or is it the other way around? Anyway, my right hand is bloody itchy for some reason. Whoops. Back in the 1980s, the early 80s, I'm guessing 81, 82, something like that. 82, there we are. Um, John Williams wrote the music to one of the most famous pieces of um, family science fiction. Out there, E.T., the extraterrestrial. And this was a wonderful, wonderful film. I hope you all remember E.T. and his long fingers phoning home. Um, yeah, yeah, exciting. It means wash hands. Yes, thank you, I, Mike. That's, uh, yes, haha, <laughs> hilarious. Thank you. Listen, when you have a little baby at home, you're washing your hands all the time. Maybe I'm washing them too much. That's a possibility. Right then, let's try the music then from uh, E.T. on an organ and see what this sounds like. This could be interesting. Let me have a quick look through it. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, gosh, it goes all over the place, doesn't it? dee da dee da 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 dee da da But um, where the hell is that going? <gasps> Oh my goodness me! Oh my goodness me! This is sight reading hell. This one is. Who who decided on this? I hope I hope, ladies. I hope you're going to make it worthwhile. <laughs> Please. Somebody asked recently. Somebody asked recently. Do you have to pay for um, requests? And the simple answer is, you don't have to pay for requests. But I'm not going to stop you. There you are. <laughs> the theme from E.T. Let's see what we can do with this.
Gosh, that was exciting to play and sound read. Uh, the theme from E.T. Lots of movement in there. Again, John Williams doing his thing, yes? And I don't know if you noticed, in the middle, haha, let's just, let's get our themes going back again. In the middle, he was moving around in tritones. Here we are, this bit, uh, this bit. Mm. Exciting stuff. It's not actual tritones, but it's got tritone harmonies hidden in there. Very clever, very, very clever. Ladies and gentlemen, the Brown Book of Magnificence is coming to join us again this evening. Our friend Gleiswanderer has asked for number 13. <gasps> number 13. Unlucky for some. <laughs> However, we know that it's a wonderful book and it's full of magnificently beautiful tunes. And tonight, rather than have a big marchy marchy number, we're going to soften things down a little bit have the delicious soft sounds from this organ. We're in Billerbeck this evening, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. The soft sounds from Billerbeck. And uh, enjoy this delicious piece of music. What do you think?
that fun? Ah, it's, it's a bit like when Irish eyes are smiling. Isn't it a bit like that as well? Anyone get that out of it? Wonderful, wonderful. I love that melody. Gorgeous. You can do so much with the harmonies. Um, substitute the harmonies to get those lovely slushy sounds. What do you think of this slushy sound, by the way, ladies and gentlemen? On a normal organ, you will have something called a flute, which will sound like this. Yeah, nice. You may have a different kind of flute, which will sound in a different place. Which is nice. And then if you do what I do and cheat and take both of those flutes and put them ever so slightly out of tune to each other, you get this effect. Isn't that, isn't that just silly? If you add the 32 foot stops to the pedal, those are the really long pipes that are very, very deep sounding, rumbly stuff, you get this. Actually, C major is not the best to get that rumbly sound. E flat, I think, is pretty good in this organ. Check this out. Isn't that cool? Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Ah, the book of magnificence. Isn't it wonderful? Now, there are not only film music uh, tunes out there uh, regarding the world of space. There are also some rather exciting pop music coming from outer space. And one particular gentleman who was particularly excited by the prospect of space and space travel was a certain Mr. David Bowie. And uh, David Bowie, originally from Essex, what a place to come from. Uh, originally from Essex, was um, very into his space music. Mm. If I was going to be naughty, I would say probably because he spent most of his time spaced out of his mind. Um, <laughs> yes, probably. Um, I never got to meet David Bowie, but I did see him on the streets in New York. I was in, I can't remember when, I was in New York a long time ago. I think it was one of the first times I was there. I think it was 2003 or something like that. I think it was 2003 and um, I was pottering around the sort of the the Greenwich Village end of Manhattan down the bottom there a little bit and somebody had t somebody had told me oh there's a sort of a red brick building over there that's where David Bowie lives and I thought oh that'd be wouldn't it be cool if you were to see him wandering around well I wandered down to that part of Manhattan and lo and behold I saw David Bowie out wandering the streets I didn't have enough courage to go up to him and say hello maybe I should have done I think he would have been a kind of a cool guy to have met. However, he came across a guy called Major Tom. And I think Major Tom had problems communicating with ground control. At least they did in this piece of music.
Ground control to Major Tom. Your circuit's dead. There's something wrong. Well, let's hope that none of that is happening to our chums up yonder. Let's hope that none of that's happening. Actually, we could go on and do some of the other bits and pieces from um, our man there, but I think we'll leave that for now and we'll have some of this. Some of this. Um, I have some of this instead. This is uh, definitely not something I thought I would ever be playing on an actual organ. It's rather weird this. It seems my my iPad seems to be picking up movements from somewhere that I'm not doing here. Here, yes. Cam just mentioned it there. He's quite right. Thank you, Cam. Um, don't forget to give us a thumbs up in the way past and hit the subscribe button as well. We're sort of getting dangerously close to 50,000 subscribers, which is amazing if you think about it. Who thought a silly little organ channel would have got to 50,000 over the years? And we promised when we get to 50,000, I'm going to be playing some interesting music. For example... <laughs> going to be playing that and in, in and in addition to that we're going to be playing some um, rather beautiful music by Mr. Um, how does it go? How does it go? Uh, how the hell does it go? That's not how it goes. Uh, no it doesn't do it. How does it go? It goes. That's it. That's it, something like that. I can't remember, it's been so long since I played it. Um, the Cortege et Litanie from Marcel Dupre. Those are promised for 50,000 subscribers, which will be coming up at some point. So get your thumbs up there, get your subscriptions in, subscribe to the channel, tell all your friends, the sooner we get to 50,000, the sooner we get those exciting bits and bobs, um, and, yeah, and the sooner I have to go and do some practice. Simple as that. Elton John. Ladies and gentlemen, Elton John, not wanting to miss out on the success of Major Toms and things like that, he came up with Rocket Man. Um, or was it the other way around? Who was first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know. Let's find out. Rocket Man. Rocket Man. How does this go again? And I think it's going to be a long, long time till Touchdown brings me round again to find I'm not the man they think I am at home. Oh no. No, no, no. I'm a rocket man, rocket man, burning out his fuse up here alone. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's play around with a rocket man, words and music, Elton John and Bernie Topin.
Pocket Man, not to be confused with Pocket Man, who is something completely different. How exciting! Rocket Man, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a wonderful piece of music from Star Wars. To end the show this evening, we're coming up to the midnight hour. We'll have to do some Marvin Gaye sometime, won't we? The, the midnight hour, that'll be good fun. But seeing as we have a loud organ with lots of shamads, do I have my shamads? Yes, I do. There they are. I think we need a John Williams style fanfare. And to close things off this evening, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play the throne room and end title from the wonderful world of Star Wars music. John Williams. It only remains for me to say thank you very much indeed to be with us, well, for being with us this evening for our space-themed evening and uh, dedicated to all the members of the crew up in the ESS, the ISS, sorry, the ESS as they say in German, but the ISS, the International Space Station, hoping you're having a wonderful time and hoping you enjoyed this bizarre organ concert. Yes, bet you never thought this kind of music could be played on well, what's technically a church organ. This is my digital version of it. Um, but yes, this is an actual organ in an actual church somewhere in Germany that has been sampled pipe for pipe, pipe by pipe, and playable on this MIDI console here. It's wonderful. An organist never has to leave the comfort of his home. Ooh. Exciting stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us this evening, for being part of the Gartro Gang, for your thumbs up, for your subscriptions, for your generous donations. Thank you very much. I have no idea how ticket sales were this evening. Um, if you have enjoyed this evening's concert, do consider chipping in and helping us out by buying a virtual ticket, either for us or for our little bundle of joy, our baby daughter. You have those two options there. If you click the PayPal link, there you are. Vanessa's got a link pinned there, paypal.com, donate, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we are very grateful to you all for everything that's coming in. It helps us keep the channel going and it helps us keep going as well. We are trying to turn this into our full time living. Um, Unlike other organists out there, we do not have a full-time living, uh, an extra job besides this. We, this is it. This is what we do, Vanessa and I. Uh, this is our source of income. So anything you can provide to help us out is, of course, very gratefully received. Thank you very much indeed. See you through the week.
That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much indeed. Let's close off with the piece of music used to inspire the theme from Star Trek. It's called Out of Nowhere, and it goes something like this. Thank you.